بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to Derma Immunology I'm Nagla El Mongi Professor of Dermatology Cairo University Our video today will be about Hydradenitis Sapirotiva as an O2 inflammatory keratinization disease Here is my reference in this video, uh, which is published in Frontiers Immunology 2020, May 2020, and its title is Hydradenitis Sapirotiva as a Potential uh, Subtype of Autoinflammatory Keratinization Disease. Hydradenitis Sapirotiva, as I have already described in my previous two videos about Hydradenitis Sapirotiva, is also known as acne inversa, and it is a persistent inflammatory skin condition affecting hair follicles typically occurring after puberty. It shows a recurring and worsening pattern. Clinical manifestations of, of hydradenitis sapirotiva vary in intensity and can include inflamed cysts, comedons, papules, pustules, nodules, abscesses, hypertrophic scars, fistulae, and uh, tunneling sinus tracts. These symptoms primarily occur in areas with abundant apocrine glands and skin-to-skin -skin contact such as armpits, groin, perineum, buttocks, inner thigh, and under the breasts, and behind the ears. Patients with hydrodenitis sapirotiva may have discomfort, itching, persistent, bad smelling, discharge, scar tightness, and or sexual issues and emotional distress. So hydrodenitis sapirotiva frequently results in significant physical and psychological burdens greatly compromising patient's quality of life. Hydradenitis sapirotiva primarily affects females with an estimated ratio of two to three females to every one male among patients. And you can go back and watch my previous video about why hydradenitis sapirotiva is more frequent in females. The prevalence of hydradenitis sapirotiva varies widely in previously published estimates ranging from 0.05% to 4.1%. The lower figures are from registry studies, while the higher ones come from the self-reported studies. The actual prevalence of hydradenitis sapirotiva remains uncertain due to the hidden nature of the disease, resulting in underreporting. Surveys indicate an average delay of 7.2 years in diagnosing hydrodenitis sapirotiva, possibly due to limited awareness or, or the absence of globally accepted diagnostic criteria. Typically, diagnosis uh, relies on patients' clinical history of recurrent painful inflammatory lesions in specific areas rich in apocrine glands. Around 34 to 42 percent of hydradenitis sapirotiva patients have a family history of the disease indicating an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. In 2010, six Chinese patients with hydradenitis sapirotiva were found to have heterogeneous loss of function mutations in these genes, NC, STN, and PSENEN -E -N, and PSEN1. These genes are responsible for gamma secretase and intermembrane protease that cleaves different substrates, including notch receptors. Subsequent research across various populations, including British, French, African American, Japanese, and Chinese, has consistently confirmed the disease causing role of these genes in hydradenitis sapirotiva patients with a family history of the condition. The identification of pathogenic mutations in NCSTN, PSENEN, and PSEN1 in hydrodenitis sapirotiva patients is a significant finding strongly indicating that hydrodenitis sapirotiva results from reduced notch signaling due to loss of function mutations in gamma secretase genes. The notch pathway plays a key role in controlling cell proliferation, differentiation, and apoptosis in various organs, including the skin. So, as regards hydrodenitis sapirotiva pathogenesis, first, hydrodenitis sapirotiva is linked to 
heterogeneous loss of function mutations in gamma secretase genes identified in certain patients. These genetic changes lead to abnormal notch signaling, causing hyperkeratosis, disrupted hair follicle differentiation, and cyst formation. Secondly, hydrodrytis saprotiva samples show elevated levels of interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 36, caspase 1, nod like receptor B3, along with an imbalance in the T helper 17 T reg cell ratio. These findings indicate that autoinflammation plays a key role in the disease's pathophysiology, and we have to notice also that. Hydrodynatis saprotiva can also occur with other auto-inflammatory conditions like inflammatory bowel diseases and bioderma gangrenosum, highlighting the significance of auto-inflammatory process in hydrodynatis saprotiva. Lastly, for moderate to severe hydrodynatis saprotiva cases, biologic treatments like adalimumab, infleximab, anakinra, uh, stokinimab, and map have shown reported efficacy. Taken together, these discoveries strongly suggest a close association between hydrodynitis saprotiva, irregular keratinization, and autoinflammation, bringing the consideration of whether it fits the concept of an autoinflammatory keratinization disease, which is a recently proposed category of disorders. Auto-inflammatory keratinization diseases fall under a newly introduced disease concept characterized by the following four aspects. The first aspect is that the primary and the principal sites of inflammation are the epidermis and the upper dermis. Secondly, inflammation occurring in the epidermis and the upper dermis results in hyperkeratosis, which is the primary and characteristic feature of auto-inflammatory keratinization disorders. The third concept, auto-inflammatory keratinization disorders are primarily uh, driven by genetic factors that lead to the hyperactivation of innate immunity primarily within the epidermis and upper dermis. Lastly, the auto-inflammatory keratinization disorders concept includes disorders characterized by a combination of autoinflammation and autoimmunity mechanisms. In the initial description of autoinflammatory keratinization disorders, this emerging disease category include various genetic skin conditions resulting from mutations in CARD14 uh, interleukin 36 receptor antagonist gene uh, or uh, node-like receptor B1. There are more genes that could be associated with hydrodynitis saprotiva. Uh, numerous examples of hydrodynitis saprotiva or hydrodynitis saprotiva-like cases have been documented in conjunction with conditions like uh, Bacchionychia congenita or uh, steatostoma multiplex, which stem from mutations in uh, uh, KRT17 or KRT6A genes. Additionally, mutations in FGFR2 gene are responsible for uh, nevus, uh, nevus comedonicus and skin lesions resembling hydrodynitis saprotiva. Also, there have been four reported cases of keratitis, ichthyosis, deafness syndrome, which is an autosomal dominant skin condition resulting from mutations in a gene called GJP2. This syndrome has been observed in conjunction with follicular occlusion triad, which includes hydrodynitis saprotiva, acne congolobata, and dissecting flocculitis of the skin. These findings highlight the significance of abnormal cyst formation and hair follicle a blockage in understanding of hydrodynitis saprotiva pathophysiology. Also, hydrodynitis saprotiva can present as a part of systemic autoinflammatory syndromes such as 
biodermal gangrenosum, acne, biogenic arthritis, and hydrodynitis suppurativa, as well as biodermal gangrenosum, acne, and hydrodynitis suppurativa, both of which are linked to mutations in the gene called PSTPIP1. Additionally, hydrodynitis suppurativa may be seen in individuals with familial Mediterranean fever who carry uh, uh, MEFV gene mutations. Actually, the occurrence of uh, MEFV gene mutations among patients with hydrodynitis suppurativa was more prevalent compared to that in healthy controls, implying a potential role of uh, MEFV gene mutations in the development of hydrodynitis suppurativa. Also, genetic variations in other autoinflammatory genes like NOT2 or uh, LPIN2 or not like receptor P3 or not like receptor P12 and others like uh, interleukin 1 receptor antagonist gene have been found in individuals with hydrodynitis suppurativa or its syndromic variants. Therefore, autoinflammation represents another key element in the pathogenesis of hydrodynitis suppurativa. Taken together, these findings indicate that gene mutations contributing to abnormal differentiation of the hair follicle epithelium and autoinflammation are linked to hydrodynitis suppurativa. The precise mechanism causing inflammation in hydrodynitis suppurativa patients remains incompletely understood. However, it is believed that the deposition of keratin, sebum, bacterial components, and cellular debris in the dermis can lead to a dense infiltration of immune cells, including T cells, primarily CD4 positive, but also CD8 positive P cells, B cells, macrophages, and neutrophils in hydrodynitis suppurativa affected skin. One important immunological characteristic observed in hydrodynitis suppurativa affected skin is the significant increase in the interleukin 1 beta, primarily produced by macrophages which are the most abundant inflammatory cells present in hydrodynitis suppurativa lesions. The heightened activity of interleukin 1 beta pathways triggers the substantial release of chemokines such as CXC chemokine ligand 1 and CXC chemokine ligand 6, which in turn promotes the extensive infiltration of immune cells, including neutrophils. This process is responsible for the clinical manifestations of hydrodynitis suppurativa, including the presence of perilent discharge. Moreover, interleukin 1 beta amplifies the release of matrix metalloproteinases like matrix metalloproteinase 3 and matrix metalloproteinase 10, which seem to contribute to tissue damage, a prominent aspect of hydrodynitis suppurativa. And it's worth noting that heightened levels of caspase 1, not like receptor P3, interleukin 6, interleukin 18, and interleukin 36, have also been documented. These observations highlight the involvement of autoinflammation in the hydrodynitis suppurativa pathophysiology. Another significant immunological feature in hydrodynitis suppurativa involves the increased expression of interleukin-17 and tumor necrosis factor alpha. There is an abundance of T helper 17 cells and an imbalance in the T helper 17 T reg cell ratio, which is likely affected by elevated interleukin-1 beta and interleukin-6 levels due to inflammasome activation. These characteristics are prominently observed in hydrodynitis suppurativa affected skin. Actually, the disturbed T helper 17 T reg equilibrium is a shared feature observed in several autoinflammatory conditions such as inflammatory bowel diseases, pest disease, and uh, spondyloarthritis. These observations provide additional evidence supporting the autoinflammatory nature of hydrodynitis subjective. So, as a summary, 
genes responsible for hydradenitis saprotifa can be divided into two groups. The genes responsible for keratinization and the genes responsible for autoinflammation. So in the first two group, we will have uh, autoinflammation preceded by keratinization in case we have mutation in these keratinization genes, which will result in autoinflammatory keratinization disorder from uh, the broad sense. In the second group, we have keratinization preceded by autoinflammation when we have mutation in autoinflammation genes, and this will result in autoinflammatory keratinization disorder in the narrow sense. Lastly, I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I'm reminding you again to subscribe to the channel and activating the alarming bell and thank you.